And that's why they call him Dr. Scalpel. Wow, that's a great story. I would never have imagined. Hello there, troops. What are you talking about? Oh, nothing, boss. Hey, what are we going to teach Alex about today? I was just thinking about that, and I decided I'm in the mood for... incisions. Great! Anyone can make a cut, but it takes a great surgeon to make an incision. Incisions allow us to get inside the body to get the surgery started. The first step is deciding where to make your incision. Each one has a different name. You're going to need to know these names, Alex. You should write them down. Let's start with some easy ones on the abdomen. Incisions that run up and down in the middle are called midline. If your incision is side to side, well that's a transverse incision. If your incision is off to one side, but still up and down, that's a paramedian. We were still doing those when I was just a young Muppet. Let's move on to some incisions named for where they are. If you don't know how to describe an incision, figure out what side it's on and whether it's the upper or lower abdomen. For instance, if it's under the ribs on the right, that's a right subcostal. It's on the right side and it's under the ribs. The other name for that is a coker. That's a good one if you're taking out the gallbladder. You can make a left subcostal incision too and join them. That's called a rooftop incision. What do you think that would be good for, Alex? Um, I suppose if you were operating on the stomach, the liver, or the pancreas. Maybe? Good. And remember, we don't mess with the pancreas. Well, I can mess with the pancreas, but you better not. Yes, boss. Remember, where you cut depends on what type of surgery you're doing. If you're looking for the appendix, your incision will be on the right lower quadrant of the abdomen. If you're after the uterus, tubes, and ovaries, your incision will be a lower transverse. That'll be a fenestiel. Hang on a minute. How do you spell that? Uh, P, F, um, don't worry about it. Thumbs will write it down for you later. With so many incisions, I'm not sure I can remember them all. Don't worry, Alex. You'll be fine. How about we look at this example of a midline incision? The big cut is already made. Now we have to open up and take a look around. That's where the retractors come in. Retraction lets us spread the incision open so we get better access to the inside. This is called exposure, which means getting access to your target as efficiently as possible. Once you get good at it, you'll discover how to get the best exposure by combining just the right incision with just the right retraction. Retractors can be big or small depending on the incision. They can also be handheld or self-retaining. As a med student, you'll be doing a lot of work with the handheld variety. If it's a little incision, they might give you a skin hook or a little cat spa retractor. Next size up are the poles. These are like a right angle. There are also curved retractors like the S-shaped and the Parker. Getting a little bigger, you have the body wall retractor. I call this the square face. If you're hauling on one of these puppies, you may need to use two hands. Let the surgeon know if you're getting tired. Retracting is hard work, Alex. I won't need to go to the gym if I'm retracting all day. I like the way you think, Alex. Let's talk about self-retaining retractors now. They're worth their weight in gold. You can put these retractors in the incision and they stay there without you having to pull on them. For instance, the bulfer retractor. Other self-retainers are so big that you have to bolt them onto the operating table and then attach the retractor blades to a ring or a bar. My favorite is the book Walter, but I also like the Farley Thompson. These big boys are pretty versatile and they come with lots of different blades for different applications. These retractors really make life easier. It's way better than having a tired med student hauling on a retractor all day. Yep, self-retainers do a better job than med students, and they ask fewer questions too. Oh, sorry Alex, no offense. No problem, Dr. Scalpel. I hope I'm not asking too many questions. There's just so much to learn. Okay, 
Let's call it a day on incisions and retraction. Tell us, what have you learned? Okay, let's see. Number one, where the incision is depends on the surgery. Number two, learn the names of your incisions. Number three, incision plus retraction equals exposure. Number four, know your retractors by name, big versus small and handheld versus self-retainers. Is that okay? That's enough for one day. Let's hit the wards.